What's up and welcome back, Wargamers. This is another exciting episode of Tactics Talk. This is episode two for Tactics Talk, and we are going to go over the new General's Handbook 2022 and give you our first thoughts and impressions. Yeah, so we want to talk about something real quick before we get into this discussion. Uh, a couple of you who have been watching closely may have noticed that we have recently started a membership service. Now, we did this kind of quietly, and we've already had some people uh, decide to be members of our channel. We appreciate every single one of you. You are really helping us to keep this channel going and to keep making new, fresh content. We love you so, so much. So thanks again. Now, since we started a membership service for the next four weeks, we're going to be doing a membership drive. Now, depending on the number of members we get, we are going to do a couple different fun little perks for everybody. So as soon as we hit 10 members, we are going to start a Discord with a members only section. And that's going to be really fantastic just to help all of us talk a little bit more about what we've been working on. Once we get to 25 members, we're going to do a fun new project. We're going to do a members voted army. So the members will get to vote on which army we're going to collect next. And they're even going to get to select what sub faction it gets painted as, all sorts of fun stuff. And that's going to be the members' chosen army. I'm really excited about that project. Yeah, that's going to be really, really good. And then to wrap things up, once we get to 50 members, we are going to do a raffle. Every member is going to get a certain number of raffle tickets, depending on which tier they choose. And then we're going to do an on camera raffle off, which should be a whole lot of fun. I absolutely adore raffles. I, I, I'm here for the raffle. So with that being said, let's get into this new General's Handbook discussion right now. <clears throat> All right, so it's finally here, General's Handbook 2022, and they have made some massive, massive changes. Now, David, we're not going to go into a full um, page by page review. It's too much. There's too many things. There's some stuff we'll get to later that will break out into sub discussions if the community wants that. But today, we we'll just do our big thoughts on this, this massive change, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at the big changes. So first up, we have the realm rules, right? So we're in Galette and we're in the splintered land. Uh, so the first big rule is masters of the splintered land, which means that friendly battle line units with four or less wounds and don't have mounts become Galatian veterans. They gain the Galatian veteran keyword. So this is yeah. going to be your, your bog standard troops. These are going to be your free guild guard, um, things like that, right? Yeah, also things with larger bases, which is going to be fantastic because of uh, one of the new things you can do regarding coherency. But this is a huge change. This is giving a key uh, a keyword to two-thirds of your army, for right. some people more. Uh, so it's going to be really big. Some good things, some bad things. I think a lot of people are getting fired up about horde meta, but there's also some kind of uh, counter things that can happen also with other units. So we can take a look at that a little bit later. Um, one big deal, though, being able to fight in two ranks. If you're within an inch of the unit, uh, the model in front of you or within right. a half inch of the model in front of you, that's big. Right. So that's yeah. going to be really big for Galatian veterans being able to fight in two ranks. Think your night haunt your blood letters, anything on a 32 mil base, anything on a 40 mil base that currently is just kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly it's doubling its damage output, which is yeah. phenomenal. I'm really excited for Stormcast Paladins, man. Yeah. I mean, Paladins are going to be the power and I'm, I'm really excited about how they do. Yep. So uh, there's, this, there's this next rule for proving grounds, David. And we're still like, wrapping our minds around how this is tactically going to work there's some really interesting like counter plays and being able to select things but basically at the start of each battle round the player going second selects one objectives to be the proving grounds right yeah and now proving grounds can only be held by a galatian veteran yeah so there's two ways that you can do that i mean obviously the first one that you think of is like oh that's going to help me make you know, easy for me to hold an objective and to not to deny, to deny somebody. Sure. Uh, but the other thing that we were talking about is if you decide to give away the turn, you can pick an objective, uh, make it a proving grounds when you know that another battle line can't get there. And then that makes you safe on that objective for the rest of the battle because it can right. only be one per turn. So right. we checked and this applies to the first turn. Yep. So you know, if somebody deploys super far away because they're worried you're going to counter strike them, if you give them the first turn, 
you can make a objective a, a proving ground and if they don't get to it then you don't have to worry about that rule for the the rest of the game which is great it really incentivizes going second uh which is really interesting yeah i think that they toyed around with it in the first ghb with seismic shift by taking an objective away and now they're realizing like wow that can really turn tide in games yeah so that's big. I'm, I'm really excited to get a half dozen games under my belt and see uh, how impactful that really can be. Moving on, we get a new spell. So Metamorphosis is gone, and we get a yeah. new spell. No uh, more low casting value, folks. Casting value 7. It's called Gaze of Gerd's 12-inch range. And they pick one enemy unit within range. And when determining the number of models in that enemy unit, they have to have it rounding down. So I think it's I, I think it's garbage. I think you never see this spell. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're gonna see the spell a whole lot either, but there's a couple already really good casters that will enjoy it, right? Uh Slon would really enjoy this because they sure. can get their spells off, but they don't enjoy being 12 inches away from you. So eh, maybe not. Yeah, uh, Archon Nagash, that's they have play, right? Uh, being able to cast and still survive and be able to do that, it could happen, but I think you're right. I don't think it's going to be game changing. Metamorphosis was game changing, it helped you get extra victory points, destroy terrain features, steal roar, an objective, roar opponents, steal an objective, lots of different things. Uh, this one's a little bit more chill. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how it plays out. I'm sure people are going to come up with very creative ways to use this. It might be, it'll be that thing where one in every six games you're like, oh, now's the time, and you'll use it, and it'll be now's the time for my yeah. squishy wizard that's for some reason within twelve of you. <laughs> and right? You're going to cast it, and you're going to miss your seven, and then you'll yeah. have to wait another six games before this comes up again. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to try to use it in the first game that we play. <laughs> Walk us through this next command ability that everyone has access to called... All right, this Realm assault. Command is just meh. I mean, it's very, very situational. So it's called Overwhelming Assault. You pick a Galatian Veterans unit with 10 or more models. Select an enemy unit within one inch after they've charged. And an enemy... Uh, the enemy unit must have a wounds character characteristic of four or less. Roll a dice. If the roll is greater than the models in that enemy unit, the strike last effect applies. So you're rolling one dice. So it only applies to units that are five or smaller. And if it is a unit of five, you have a 17% chance of it going off, which is garbage. Now, if you're fighting into a unit of three models, you've got a four up chance, right? Four gruntas. Four gruntas, sure. Maybe some uh, necropolis stalkers sure that would be great uh so strike last very situational but if you run into a unit like that that has uh four or less wounds but it's only three models it probably hits pretty hard so i, I mean, mean i think you'll see it here and there it just depends it'll be like every fifth game you play people will have units that apply to this i feel but like i mean zombies zombies would want this spell right because there's going to be 20 of them not spell this command they might use this yeah maybe but i mean is that going to be better than just using an all-out attack and just just pulverizing the unit before it can fight you you know uh and you're not going to use it on like five zombies or less right because they're just going to die anyway so uh i think you'll see it about as much as the spell honestly well, you know, I didn't write down what phase does it happen in. End of your charge phase. So you can, yeah. It's end of charge. So you can use it and then you could still all attack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Different so you phases. could use it in a separate phase. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's doable. I will also use that in the very first game that I play. I'm going to use every single rule that there is in the first okay. game and lose because <laughs> I'm trying too hard. This is the big one, right? This is what everyone's talking about. We got two new core battalions. Um, so the first one, David, is called Expert Conquerors. It's Galatian veterans only. You have to take a minimum of two units. You can take a maximum of three. And then each model in this battalion then counts as three on objectives. That sounds amazing. I, I, yeah. think we, I actually think Brutes in this is pretty interesting. 
Yeah, well, because they shut down single wounded models. They count as three. And they have, you know, tankiness. And yeah. they fight in two ranks. So, yeah, I think the... I think the three and four wounded models that are Galatian veterans win the most, even yeah. though they're not going to count as, as, as many models because they're not as paper thin. Right. Yeah. That seems, that seems really good at first. You're like, I'll take every battle. I'll take three battle line units and max them out. And then I've got like hundreds of models on the objective, but right. then there's this other ability. You, you this other this battalion one. bounty hunters uh, battle line only. Add one damage to melee weapons of targeting a Galatian veterans model. Well, it's not Galatian veterans that are in this battalion on the left. It's all Galatian veterans. So you turn any unit that's eligible into a wrecking ball. Right. Uh, and it's, it's battle line only. So you're picking non-Galatian units. So you're picking Gore Gruntas. You're picking Beast Claw Raiders dragons mm -hmm. um anything like that is suddenly your go-to bounty hunter and it also isn't risking anything yeah yeah so let me ask you this if you're if you have dragons that are monsters and they take the battle line role they're no longer counted as monsters does it say anything about monsters it says they the can't be hunters? behemoths okay but the dragons aren't behemoths they're not so you're good to go they're pretty awesome though. Yeah. It says troops. you can tell everybody watching this can tell that we're grasping at straws. We're like, we're gonna make dragons great. <laughs> we're gonna we're it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. And uh I I'm still gonna take them to tournaments and I don't care if I go one and four. I'm just gonna see how good they can be. I think I'm gonna see how good they can be. I think we're you're gonna go to that first tournament and everyone's gonna they're gonna go hard into having all these expert conquerors and all these big horrors. Right. Because that's what everyone's reading into and then if that's the meta and you counter that meta with oh well i'm just going to crush everything it doesn't now the, matter now dragons on the charge are negative two random three damage yeah. four of them has 29 attacks <laughs> godly <laughs> negative two three damage on 29 attacks yes please so uh, i feel like we yeah. could keep debating this slide for another 20 minutes but there's going to be so many people commenting you guys are garbage tell it i, I don't, don't know how to know. play age of sigmar you don't know but i i think that the bounty hunters are going to just break this horde idea yeah 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 um, fulminators bro i'm not even going to talk about it i'm just going to say the word fulminators <laughs> all right tactics. let's get into these battle tactics man i'm not stoked about the battle tactics so gaining momentum first half seems fine Right, select and destroy one enemy unit. Easy. Uh oh, there's a second half. You have to hold more objectives. Yeah. So it's broken ranks and conquer at the same time. Pretty I much. I mean, if you're already holding more and then you can kill something, sure. This yeah. is fine. Uh, and I for mind. an eye. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Eye for an eye. Eye for an eye is pretty straightforward. It's revenge. You destroy destroy one un enemy unit if one or more friendly enemy units was destroyed this turn. So to note, you have to be going second for this to even apply. Yeah. Well, you could also it could also be if the person goes second at the bottom of battle round two, and then you go first. But then you can't do it. You have to get the roll off. It says this turn. So you have to be going second, and something has had to have died this turn. Uh, I don't know about that. I, I think it's just the turn before. I don't think it says anything about the battle round. Let's so it's just read it word In the for turn word. before. Let's read it word for word. All right. You're going to edit this out, so I'm just going to... Oh, no. We're going we're gonna to drink your apple juice. I'm just having some apple juice. <clears throat> totally legit. Very nutritious. Complete this battle tactic if one or more friendly units was destroyed in the previous turn and one or more enemy units were destroyed this turn. Okay, you're fine. You're right. Previous okay. turn, this turn. So, yeah. yeah. So, it, I was imagining a battle round thing. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if you kill the unit, then I'll kill your unit when I go next. Doable. Okay. That's less bad than I thought it was. Desecrate their lands. You want to go through? Sure. Control one faction terrain or area terrain that is within enemy's territory. So partially or wholly within. 
uh, this seems really easy. Of the list, it seems the one that's actually like... Yeah, especially if you're a defender, you can just like barely tag the opponent's territory with a piece of terrain and then just run at it. Yeah. With 60 models or something. Right. Because cool. you're in, in, in a world of tournaments you, i don't know how it's going to go because those usually aren't player placed terrain but as right. long as it's player well, placed terrain i'm going to put one right on the edge of the territory so that i can go snag that yeah so that seems doable i like desecrate their lands i'm already thinking in my head like i'm trying to make a rolodex of the order of these battle tactics and how i'm going to do them because they're harder they are uh, uh this, this one's, one's mine my... select and destroy one enemy unit on the battlefield with your general so that one seems pretty easy. You just have to be careful not to put your general out in the wind. I have a question, and I don't know the answer to it, but what if you have a model that also counts as a general? So good question. It specifically says the model picked to be your general. So Warmaster okay. is not right. picked to be your general, and it wouldn't apply. Yeah. That's doable at certain times in the game, probably turn four, turn five. Right. Uh, or you lean into making that big bad thing your general just so that you can do this because you don't right. have to fear slay the warlord. Just make a missile. Just make a missile out of your general. Preferably have a war master in your army so he can just go die and get a battle tactic and then you're like, it's fine. I still have another general. Yeah. Cool. Doable. I like that one. All right. You take this one. Head to head, pick and destroy one Galatian veteran unit on the battlefield with a friendly Galatian veterans unit. So this is some hot GV on GV action. Yep. You got to take out an enemy battle line with your battle line. Right. Now, in the world that you and I were just discussing, David, where I'm taking an army that has no Galatian veterans, obviously I can't do this. Yeah. So then you just have to think a little bit harder about what you're going to do. Uh so yeah, they're really leaning into this. So you're gonna probably have to take a couple units of these. Uh, let's go to the next one. Out muscle. Pick one enemy Galatian veterans unit that is contesting an objective, which is marked as the proving grounds. No, so, has to be Galatian. Has to be on proving grounds. Score yeah. if no enemy models from that unit are contesting the objective at the end of this turn. So right. basically, kill the whole unit. Um, because uh, any smart player is just going to keep taking the ones that aren't on the objective. Right, right. Or yep. use some, there's a couple fringe stuff that allows you to move their uh, models. Like I'm thinking of Korn's like blood lure. What is it mm -hmm. called? Blood bind. So That's basically you force an enemy unit to move to the closest friendly unit. But so that could happen some very, but mostly yeah. this is going to be just it's Don't yeah it's that. your new broken ranks it's your new broken ranks uh out muscle is cool i think people are going to fail it a lot just because they're going to be like okay i got to do 14 damage to this battle line to destroy it well i did 13 damage and then he used a command point to ignore battle shock <laughs> so yeah. many, ah crap i missed it how yeah. many times have you missed broken ranks because Sure. Yeah, like defense, or how many times have you missed Slay the Warlord because of Finest Hour and things like that? Yeah, Broken Ranks is hard to achieve sometimes with save stacking, uh, ignoring Battle Shock, redeploy. There's a lot of different things there, right? That's the other thing is if you're moving into this unit and they redeploy toward you to have more models on the objective, then it's like, wow, that's really hard now. So or it's a 12 inch bubble. They redeploy still all in on the objective and you're still. <laughs> you know out in the sure. wind <laughs> yeah yeah so that's going to be a tricky one still doable but tricky um, uh, against the odds pick one and friendly unit from your starting army score if the unit is contesting an objective that you control and there are no relation veteran models on that objective this is your turn one yep this is what yep. everyone does turn one that's the that's the new ferocious advance right there Done. so that that kind of makes you want to go first. But uh, even second, this is pretty safe. Yeah, unless the person is just all over all three objectives. Uh, yeah, that's doable. I like against the odds. Uh, last one, David. And this, you take it. Bards through enemy lines. Two or more units from your starting army are wholly within enemy territory at the end of the turn. Savage Spearhead 
Yep. This time, instead of monsters, you score an additional victory point if two or more of these are Galatian veterans. So I can think of a couple of armies who will benefit from this greatly. Night Hunt, Soul Blight, Stormcast Eternals, anybody that can teleport with yep. their starting army is loving this. Yeah. And that's a great way. Like if you're playing an army that can't achieve this easily and you're just like, boop, and then you get three points plus objective points, and now they're already behind by a few points. So but, it's cool. I was looking I like at daughter I was looking at daughters. Um, you could take your they they have some additional battle tactics that essentially are behind enemy lines or barge through enemy lines, and you could just tech to that. You could just take two sure. units that go hide in a corner away from the whole rest of the army. And all they do is just score victory points. They don't do anything else for 180 points uh, to score three battle tactics. That's being really totally worth it. Totally worth that it. Be yeah. worth it. Uh, that is also a very easy one, right. just depending on what army you play. Honestly, I mean, yeah. you got a 50, 50 of being able to do that with the, you know, the selection of armies, but uh, you know, I think, I think it's going to be a good one. Is there an army that's going to straight out and out stop your ability to deep strike in their back backfield? Like, no. I mean, smart players can can slow you down for a couple turns, but it's typically pretty hard to deny that for the whole game because you got to be out there scoring objectives, so you right. can't just hang out in your territory. Now, if you're playing like, we'll go into the new battle plans later. So this is just an example from the old GHB. But if you're playing like. Uh, feral foray where if somebody can't beat you they can just stand on their objective so you can't outscore them then you might be in trouble but i think it's a doable one i think it's going to be something that people do early on and late game to just turn the tide just the one or two extra points you know right. uh stormcast love this because they have you know they have thunder strike deep strikers everything's battle line if in sub factions stuff like that paladins love this uh it's great i like it Grand strategies. They all suck. Let's just skip this page. Just kidding. Go ahead. Let's go into it. They're hard, man. Um, you better thing be fingers crossed that you have a faction specific one that is achievable. Yeah. Um, yep. Because a lot of these are either they're just defend what's yours. End of battle, no enemy units wholly within your territory. Yeah. So if you let even one unit just plop into the back corner of your territory Dude. after you're on the other side of the board, then you miss you your grand it. strategy. Nobody's going to pick it. Demonstration strength, it. Uh, end of battle, three more regulation veteran units from your starting army still on the battlefield. Yep, that's hard with starting army. That's uh, hold the line, but you have to have three units instead of one now. And your Galatian veterans are twice as fragile as they were before. Yeah, they're just getting smacked around because everybody's going to be like, yeah, Galatian veterans and then bounty hunters come in and, and, and ruin their day. So that is a tricky one. Certain armies can pull it off. Like in our last video, I was talking about taking an army that has like 12 MSU units of Soros Knights, right? Right. Then you're like, I got this, right? You can just keep three units back. Sure. So that that means you have to go all in in the horde thing. It's like not only do I have to have my minimum battle line, but I need to have like 15 battle line and just dedicate three MSU units to not fighting and just hiding. So I think it's doable for horde armies. I think that that's a very achievable one. Skaven, Skaven love that. Uh, no place for the weak, end of battle, no enemy battle lines on the battlefield. I don't like That's it. crazy. That's so hard. That's, that's hard mode right yeah. there. Because the moment I, I'm down to one guy, I'm just going to run him across the field. And just, I'm running away now. Sure. And and the new the new release is all about battle line. So you're going to see twice as many battle line while people are trying to kit for these all these new abilities and battle tactics. No place for the weak. No way. No way. If you pick that, you're amazing and you just don't care. You're like, I got this. Show you may or may not have it. Show of dominance is the next one. Friendly Ganation veteran units in each quarter of the the battlefield. The battlefield. Of the battlefield. Um, uh, yeah. So, if it's split into fours and you're right in the center, that's pretty good. So, to know, it certainly doesn't say that there, because in 40k this exists, but you have to not be within nine inches of the center. 
Um, for some yeah. reason, that's not here. Um, Show of dominance. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe possibly. it's good. It's I mean, certainly once again, the most reasonable of the group. Once again, if you have 200 models, then that seems pretty achievable. Take what's theirs. Yeah. More friendly units than enemy units in your opponent's territory. So yeah. these are these are this is for aggro armies, but also horde armies at the same time. Like yeah. you have to be both. I have to have more units than you and have more of my stuff in yours. That's hard. You have to be confident that your army has more bodies than the other army and it's strong enough to just obliterate. So right. yeah, that's that's very hard. And this one, the last one, tame the land. Control all objective objectives. All objectives. Wholly outside of your territory. So that's everything no man's land and the opponent's objective. So if you crushed the game and killed everything and <laughs> took all the objectives and you won, then yeah. you also get your grand strat. You win Warhammer. Here is three extra victory points just for you. If these were selectable at mission or before, before game, if we could come to sure. the table and I could select <laughs> one... Isn't that isn't that like a good rule for every command ability and artifact as well? But that's how, it, that's how it is in Just 40k. Just let me see what I'm fighting first. You you come in at 40k and you're like, okay, I see the mission, I see what it is. Now I'm going to pick my secondaries. Yeah, demonstration of strength and uh, show of dominance are the two easiest ones, but I wouldn't say they're easy. No, no. No. Grand strategies, throw them in the garbage. Uh, go grab your battle tome and see if there's one that you can kit for because uh, these are going to be tough. And I think it's going to throw a lot of games, which is cool. Uh, it's cool that it's hard to do, I guess. Moving on. I sound super stoked, right? I'm really excited about those new grand strategies, man. Now, I, now I am excited for Endless Spells. Endless um, Spells are dope. So excited. Generally speaking, um, we didn't want this to be an endless spells report or a tactics talk. So if you want to go more in endless spells and talk about specific tactics you can use with them, uh, what we think about every single one, we can even get into faction specific ones. We can do that. But today I picked my top four. These are the ones that I got real giddy about when I saw them and been painting them all week and we're gonna get them ready for the for the show so yeah you actually painted this one didn't you uh yeah no i, mean, I mean this picture you painted that right no <laughs> <laughs> um that's so pretty lazy for warhammer community what's up with those skulls that are just black with dry brush on them you couldn't do better than that they like to bring the standard a little bit down so that people like me can appear to be actually good painters yeah, that's that looks like a Dave painting right there. <laughs> so David, this is a casting value of six. It has 18 move and flies. But before the commanding player moves the spell, one friendly wizard can get into it. And they're removed from the battlefield. And then after the friendly the endless spell has moved, the wizard can get out fully within three of the endless spell. He then suffers one mortal. And then the wizard can move normally. So you can't put Nagash in it, right? Right, because your base has to be three inches wide or less. Right. If you can't fit in the aura of the boat, you can't get in, which makes sense. I mean, Nagash doesn't need a boat. No. Because he just does his thing. But yeah, this, this can be very, very good. We won't it's... talk too much about it, but I mean, keep in mind that Arcane Tome is a thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really bashy things that are on uh, bases that are less than three inches that can now... They can just put their little thinking cap on and cruise across the field. And slingshot you know? across the board and then move and charge and have the greatest time ever. Yeah. Uh, uh, think about throw Bastion in this stupid thing. Well, Bastion can't take it. Take it. I, no, I, I Bastion lied. doesn't get any. <laughs> Bastion doesn't get any. Insert model with arcane tome here yeah night your bonus night your bonus can go in there oh best part of this david how much would you pay for this how many points would you pay for this 70 points that seems reasonable i'd pay for a, a delivery mechanism in warhammer i'd pay 85 for a rhino right this little guy right here 
30 points. 30? 30 points. That's amazing. Can I put 10 evocators wholly within three of this all the way around? Evocators, that's interesting. Yeah, so I, I take 10 and I encrust the endless spell because they have wizard keyword Well, there's two or more models in the unit. Pick a wizard and then move. I think people are going to do that until there's a fact. <laughs> they're because they're wizards. So they're gonna I mean, they suck they right now. The I just we've got like thirty uh, evocators. I'll say I'm different. Uh, those things we have like thirty of them, but we never use them, and that's yeah. because I mean, if you can do that with a unit of a wizard, then you could also do that with the mounted ones, and then they move twelve inches when they get out. So that's pretty good. <laughs> you could do that it's, with a Knight Draconis. Sure. You have a Marcane Tome. He gets out. He moves 12 inches. And then he does the battle tactic where he destroys a unit. There you go. There you go. We fix And he has dragons. to be a wizard. So you give him flaming weapon. Yep. And so he comes over and he hits you in the face with negative three ram, three damage attacks in your deploy on the first turn for 30 points. Pretty bomb. Next, we've got some secret plans for that endless spell. We'll talk about that in depth when we're doing some list reviews in the next couple of weeks. All right, we talked about that for way freaking too long. Let's go on. Quick silver quick swords. Silver this swords. is just good. Casting value of six, eight inch move and fly. You pick one yep. unit moved across. Not oh, doesn't have to move all the way over, just across. And then the blades dance all over you. They do twelve. You roll twelve dice. Each five up is immortal that cannot be negated. Yeah. So that's a fancy little four up ward you have, Bastion. Mm -hmm. Just dead. I love it. It's and great. This is all for the low, low cost of 60 points. 60 points. Okay. Well, that's a little mortal wound bomb. Yep. I love it. Yeah, it's great. I, I, I love it too. And it's a cool looking endless spell. Cogs. Cogs, Cogs are back to their former glory. Cogs are back. Yeah. Now, would would you ever increase the flow of time, David? No. No. I don't care about rerolling charges. And it's also a reroll charge for uh, for everyone. I mean, I guess you could potentially do it, but you have to be within twelve inches of it, right? You, you want this in your deploy. You want to be able to reroll casting rolls. 12 inch of rerolling casting for friendly wizards. So many armies need this. Yeah. Well, and the people that are already good at casting, this is pretty amazing. Right. I mean, my buddy Jared, shout out to Rage Babies. Uh, my buddy Jared plays Lumineth and he has like, I don't know, every single unit in his army is a wizard. Well, now it's really hard to unbind their amazing and annoying mortal wound spells. Yep. Plus one to mortal wounds, so mortal wounds on fives, and it's like guaranteed going to happen to you. That's hardcore. <laughs> Nightmare mean, wants it's, this. It's so good. Daughters want this. Luminous want it. Everybody needs this. Let me give you another hypothetical. So something I've been seeing with triple casters and beyond. So you know, Slons, Lord Croak, the Gash. You love to cast spells, and it's so fun and fantastic until you roll two ones, right? right. So Nagash, as long as he doesn't miscast on his first spell, he can poop a, chron a chronomatic cogs right next to him and then re-roll his casting. So if he's like, I roll the three, it's only a six. Yep. I don't like that. I re-roll it and now it's a nine and now it's a 12 because yep. of his buff. So he loves it, man. This is so busted and broken with something that already is really good at casting. But you're right. If I'm uh, orcs, and I have one shaman and I want to teleport a maw crusher. I don't know why you need to do that. They're freaking fast. Anyway, insert other uh, example here. But Marathi <laughs> trying to get off uh, um, Black Whore of Olgu. Or Mind Razor. Yeah. Both Huge. are really high cast. Because um, we've been playing Daughters of Cain and the casting sucks now. Yep. They're still strong. The casting is just not a uh, instrumental part of the army anymore. So yeah. yeah. But as soon as you is, take it from an eight up or, or rolling an eight, which is bad odds, to rolling a 
a re-roll of eight. Now you have a 50-50 shot. This is much more reasonable now. Yeah, this is great. So how many points, Michael? 30 points. It's 30? 40. Points. Excuse me. 40 points. 40 points. That is stupid cheap. Stupid cheap. In the last General's Handbook, that's a 90, 100-point endless spell right there. Right. And a lot of times, most armies are coming in 50, 40, 30, 20 points under. Now you just throw in your little end of spell, and this is much better than a triumph. Yeah. Super good. All right, let's move on. Purple Sun. Oh, boy. Uh, Eight-inch move and fly. Casting value of eight, which is relatively high. It's high because this thing is freaking good now. Mm -hmm. uh, after it moves, roll a dice for each unit within three. On a one, one model from that unit is slain. That's a hero killing thing uh, that can kill elite units, Kurnoth hunters, brutes, stuff like that. It's great. It's just, you know, it's not a very good chance, but it could happen. Uh, but minus one to save rolls for units within six, that's massive. This is going to my Night Haunts list. All right. I mean, it's the best endless spell in the world for Night Haunt. Yep. It debuffs enemy armies further. It doesn't affect them. And it has a chance to auto slay things. Now, I will say this. If you're a night haunt model and you're within six inches of it, you could slay yourself. You can't reduce your save, but you could slay yourself. So, you know, just don't put Lady O there unless you like to gamble. If you think 83% is a good thing to roll with, then it's fine. But so yeah. I'm gonna I'm going to I've already changed my list to include the Grim Hailer. And I love the Grim Hailer. Um, so that he can Lady O can roll cogs. Now we're re-rolling. Mm -hmm. And then the Grim Hailer can wound himself. Have a now he's casting this on a five. Oh yeah. That's re-rolling. And then he can get out of there. Yeah, so you know, we should probably talk about how people are gonna kit for battle line in this one, but they've made the endless spell so good that. I think that people are going to low-key have to kit for magic, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if I play Bone Reapers now, I'm going to take Archon every single time. Because your endless spells need to go away, and mine need to come out. Right. And if I get within 12 inches of you, I also want to be able to cut the model count in half. That's a pretty good spell for somebody like him, right? So that makes me think about throwing wizards in a little bit more. You know who doesn't care about endless spells? the incarnate the dragons <laughs> don't care am i minus one to save no i'm not i'm fine so there's things that will do just fine and there's things where you're gonna have to change your your lists completely yeah uh and that's what's fun i mean it's hard for people that are like i play stormcast and that's all i collect and i took out a second mortgage so I could buy 13 dragons, right? Right. Well, now they're like, well, GW's picking on me, man. They're taking away my good rules and my list, my one list that I use everywhere I go, right? But for us that really like to play this game, this is exciting because when you have, you know, $10,000 worth of Age of Sigmar stuff and half of it is in a bin covered in dust and spiders and ants and shit, then this is really exciting. Uh, malign sorcery box with all the endless spells i bought that three years ago and michael is now just painting them because most of those endless spells were hot garbage forever or they were so many points that you couldn't take them yeah so this is big this is pandering to the people that love this game and play this game a lot not the person who has one army or is just getting into the hobby it can be kind of off-putting like what do you mean you just changed the whole game you know, but this is I for think it's the good. Galatian veterans. Like only Galatian veterans own these right now. Yeah. Yeah. They own it, but they are super weak to bounty hunters, which I think is gonna No, I mean we're gonna... we are the Galatian veterans. Oh, we're the Galatian veterans. <laughs> We've right. been okay. around I see the what you're saying for a minute. Now. Sorry, I'm kind of slow, guys. That's why I wear hats like this. Let's go to the <laughs> let's go All to right. the next one. Next oh, one. No. You got it. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I thought you got my it. next. I thought my next one was the gnashing maw. I thought I did that slide. 
we'll just hold it up real close to your camera so <laughs> everybody can see. Whoa. A little closer. That's not close enough. He's so cute. Yeah, there you go. The Gnashing Maw. We'll talk about that later. We'll do a video about all the endless spells. I think it's pertinent and it's fun to talk about. People like that. So let's okay. get into biggest winners. Hot takes. So I think the non-Galatian battle lines, that these are your biggest winners of this book. Because they don't care about bounty hunters. Because they don't. And care everybody's going to take that bounty hunters battalion. I mean, who doesn't want plus one damage when you have a 75% chance of units being on the board? More than a 75% chance of units being on the board that can benefit from it. They're they're going to crush things. So dragons <laughs> are battle line. Yep. <laughs> and are not Galatian veterans and can be bounty hunters. Yeah. Beast Claw, Beast, Beast Claw Raiders. Yeah. Have fantastic choices. And now you're not giving up all those monster points, priority target points. All of those are gone. So you just get to have a field day. You're not running into any uh Hunters of the Heartland. So you're stomping your your heart's delight. Yeah, you're stomping and you're getting extra damage and you're flying around being annoying. It's great. I'm so, and Sylvaneth have access to fantastic uh battle lines with Kurnoth Hunters. Uh Tree Lords are battle line in certain things. Oh, yeah. So that can get Kurnoth really Hunters scary. with swords in two ranks is is pretty bomb. I mean, they're great. So swords uh, in two ranks won't work because they're not Galatian veterans. Oh, because they're five wounded, huh? They can do sides, though. Yeah, they can do sides because of their reach. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, below that, we've already talked about this a little bit, but bounty hunters, right? Yeah. Bounty hunters is going to crush people to death that decide to kit just for the holds three or just kit for only battle line. Like, uh, next to dragons, up a little bit higher, we have Dracothian Guard listed. Fulminators are no longer priority targets. And now they can be negative two rend and four damage <coughs> with 20 attacks and reinforced unit. That is amazing. Like that will kill 60 zombies, no problem. Yeah. No problem. Even with their ward saves. Uh, uh, we talked about this a lot. Endless spells. We think endless spells are one of the new hotness. Uh, yeah. There's so many. Yeah, well, they choices. finally are pointing them correctly, right? Right. Like, if they're any more than 50 points, then people aren't going to take them. But if they're if they're in between 20 and 40 points, then everybody's going to take them. And then people are going to have to kit for it, and it's going to change the dynamics of the game. So I'm really, really excited about Endless Spells. Man. I wrote one. I wrote this list. I'm excited for it. It's going to be Hallow Heart with four Endless Spells, and it's going to be just pandemonium. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be nuts. I uh, love it. This yeah. last one. Bring out your wizards, baby. <laughs> Just hordes, just straight hordes, not quasi hordes, but horde hordes. Yeah, so we're talking brave lords. Yeah, we had a game day the other day, and I just took. I mean, uh, Michael's chewing through some uh, soul blight grave lords, so we get them on the channel, and uh, so I just brought out uh, skeleton zombies and grave guard, and their board presence is ridiculous. Like they're all over the board, they're coming back half strength. They're retreating and and uh, and rallying themselves. They're coming back from the dead. They're they're killing units and turning them into zombies. I mean, they're amazing. I'm yeah. I'm excited. I think I think Soul Blight is going to be super fun to play. Uh, Night Haunt, fantastic, so good. Uh, a lot of different horde stuff that's going to be fun to play. Skaven are going to wreck. Skaven get to fight in three ranks. I don't know if you knew that, Michael, but that's a rule they have. Depending on their unit size, they get to add a certain uh, distance to the reach of their weapons. Nice. So they, they've got like the cool new fight in two ranks rule on steroids. And they also have thousands of models on the board for you to try to kill. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, hordes, hordes are going to win. Not necessarily because they're Galatian veterans, just because you have an overwhelming amount of models to hold the board, get the new battle tactics, uh, claim proving grounds and deny your opponent so okay. i think it's going to be either you play a bounty hunter heavy army that just obliterates or you play a horde army that has a lot of msu so you just can't take it all down yeah anything in the middle is too too scary right uh when i was at the san diego open there was a gentleman who is at every tournament uh and he had a bone splitters army that had uh 12 units of big stabbers and nobody could beat it yeah. because it was just so many little units like if you're a blob of 
of sentinels or or adjudicators and you have 30 shots and you do mortal wounds with them and stuff that's great but what do you do if there's 15 units to shoot at and they're all about 12 inches away from you Mm -hmm. you you split your attacks and then you don't kill the whole unit or you overkill a unit and it gets really difficult a lot more difficult than you may think so i think people were already on to something with that and i think we're really going to see it shine in this new uh in this new general's handbook i'm excited for this season man it's going to be fantastic so we think our biggest losers are actually the galatian veterans um you're just twice as fragile as you were before yeah Um, so you're you're kidding you're kidding to have more of these galatian veteran units to help uh get battle tactics and and match the new handbook but at the same time there's going to be things running around that do extra damage to you right. in every game that you play. So you're going to need to have Galatian veterans, but you're going to need to also, I think everybody's going to have to have bounty hunters, man, because yep. if you don't, then you're missing out on a bunch of extra damage that you could be doing because everybody's got Galatian veterans in their lists. They just will. So I think your, your dragon's list as it's currently constructed with the, the two blocks of reinforced and then your two um, vindicators yeah, two by five units, uh, two units of five vindictors. Yep. Uh, I'm Stormkeep, so I already count as three. So I don't have to take that battalion. Then the And then the two units of four dragons are bounty hunters. Mm-hmm. So now I'm three drops, but everybody's going to be more drops now. Right. So one drops are going to die. Uh, and if the dragons aren't bounty hunters, it's still a great list. And it will still do fine, and it still has things that can beat it, but it is going to, it's just going to take skulls, man. I mean, they're going to burn everything to the ground. That negative two rend and three damage is no joke. And if you don't believe me, then look at Fulminators, you know? Um, and Dragons are a little faster, can reroll their charges, and have better shooting. So I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, taking a hit, getting nerfed is no big deal. There's lots of different things to collect, lots of different ways to play, and Quite honestly, nobody wants to take the same list every time they go to an event anyway. Wow. So that was a lot of fun. Um, it was awesome to get our first looks on it. I'm excited to go over and experiment with all sorts of new lists, all sorts of new missions. Um, comment down below if you guys are really interested in uh, a breakdown of some missions or some more specific tactics on things we can do in the missions things we can do with endless spells comment down below what you're excited for let us know we love engaging with you guys in the comments yeah absolutely i think the next thing that we ought to get into in the next video is go into depth with the battle plans uh i think talking about the battle plans is going to help kind of roll all of these new abilities together so we can really start piecing out what's going to be good what's not going to be good uh so on and so forth and obviously in the next week or two we're going to start drop in some new battle reports with all of these new rules and tons and tons of new armies, man. Uh, we're always hard at work to bring you new content and we're excited to uh, see you for the next video. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're going to go back to working hard and we'll see you for the next one.